You are tuned in to your weekly Sunday morning word broadcast, Rhema Power, with Reverend Ni Bernard Adiakwa, Senior Pastor of Powerhouse Ministries International, a program designed to improve your understanding into the Word of God, bring you practical solutions, and empower you to rise above life's daily challenges. Stay tuned. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service. We also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Mana, a weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God. In Jesus' name, God richly bless you. Turn your Bible quickly, Psalm 47. Let's read verses 1 to 3. The weapon of praise. Somebody say the weapon of praise. Psalm 47, verse 1. 1, 2, go. Oh, clap your hands. All ye people. How many people? You see, I don't know why some people come to church in the presence of God. You hear instructions that are prophetic and divine. This is God himself talking to us. This is God himself showing us the secrets and the mysteries. That will break you out of every prison jail. That will shatter every wall that stands between you and destiny. That will break the foundations of prisons. That will cause cities to be moved. And that will allow Jesus to enter into his temple. Listen, when it comes to prison time, it's a mystery. Oh. So he says, oh, clap your hands. Anyamime. Don't sit down. Oh. Do you know why you clap? There are two reasons why you clap. You clap to excite and cheer because you've seen your champion arrive. There are people who go to the stadium. And all of a sudden, maybe their football star will arrive at the stadium. Without anything, the first natural spontaneous activity is they begin to clap and shout. The guy hasn't even entered the pitch. And when the guy even goes on the pitch, it is likely that he may lose the match. And yet before, they are clapping and cheering. You come into the presence of God. One of the things you come with, enter into his courts with praise. You don't wait for God to do it before you praise. You praise him because you want him to do it. That is why the devil is keeping many people away from praise. They trivialize it because everything God will use as a weapon, the devil will trivialize it and controvert it. So there are many people here. Forgive me, you may not need prayer today. What you need is praise. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Some of you clap better for your somebody else. But me, I have decided that there are some things I will never give to man. So my loudest clap will be to God. My biggest offering will go to God the best of my life will go to God because he's a great king above all above all and when I'm doing it I do it with understanding and I do it with a spirit of excellence and I don't have any excuse my best dance is not for a disco it's not for a funeral it's not to impress you my best dance will be to God the best of my life will be to God so when the Bible tells you to clap make sure that your clap is better than a clap for any other person Then the next instruction says, clap your hands, all ye people. Then he says, shout unto God. Shout unto who? So wait, when we say shout, and uh, God is telling us, shout unto God. So let's say, I want to shout so much that if there's any distance between me and heaven, my shout will be able to cross all the barriers and get there. He will hear me in heaven. So he says, shout unto God. How do you shout unto God? He says, with a voice of sorrow, with a voice of defeat, with a tired voice. Now, have you had somebody who is shouting with a voice of triumph? Because, you see, unless we get it right, we will not get the right results. So you can shout and not get the exact results. And you can clap and also not get the right results. So when he says, clap your hands, see, these are instructions that, for me, you follow to the letter. It's like a, a recipe. And then he says, clap your hands, all ye people. And then he says, shout unto God. 
this shout is not to a stadium. This shout is not to a, a political party. This shout is not for an election. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. It's no longer a joke. It's no longer uh, something we are doing to amuse ourselves. This is a weapon. It's choking some things. <laughs> So the Bible says that clap your hands, all ye people, shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Listen, God intentionally said voice of triumph because it says shout as if you already have the victory. Shout as if you already have the job. Shout as if you already have the child. Shout as if you have already been promoted. Shout as if you have already been given the... Now, it's going to explain to you why it says, for the Lord most high is terrible. <laughs> You see, the, he says the reason why you shouted, you knew that you had an understanding that the Lord Most High, he's terrible. And he's a great king, not only in Chokohu. If you find yourself in Ashiaman, he's a great king. If you find yourself in London, he's a great king. If you find yourself in Kolebu, he's a great king. If you find yourself in Chokohu, he's a great king. He's a great king over all. For the Lord Most High is a terrible God. Why did we shout in the voice of God? Because the Lord is appearing. As for him, it's a nonsense. Huh? You see why we do it with understanding? Because it's not that today we have eaten. So, when a pastor ate, he made talk, he made share. No. And you find out that Jehoshaphat, Joshua, when they were shouting, they were not eating. After seven days of walking around, you, at, the, at the seventh day, you must be tired. But it was the seventh day that they gave a long blast. And the people shouted with a great shout. When they were actually weak, that's when they use their energy and gave off a sacrifice. I know you may not be well today. I know you may not have money in your pocket. But that's the reason why you must be spiritual. Because life is spiritual. And to be spiritually minded is life. The worst thing is for you to be broke and to be silent. Or to be sick and be silent. And to allow the devil to take away your clapping and your shouting. It is only a defeated people who don't make noise. When you go to the stadium, who are the people who are quiet? Losers. When you go through life, who are those who are quiet? Losers. Victorious people are never quiet. Mm-hmm. You cannot keep us quiet, you devil. We refuse to be silent until praise is established in the earth. In fact, that's why when things are going against you, find a place to shout. Find a place. Go somewhere. Go to the beach. Go lock yourself up somewhere. Let it out. Yes, Lord. It's a weapon. He says, for the Lord most high is terrible. He's a great king over all the earth. Verse 3. Verse 3. He says, verse 3 says, all of a sudden, you find out that with a shout, God is coming in as a man of war. He says, he shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. So in the shout, you find out that God has come out as a mighty battle warrior. He's coming to fight for you. Because every time you shout, he's about to perform. You know, those of us who were young and we used to go to the stadium, when you get to the stadium, and you're about to maybe do the 100 by 4. And you know that, Charlie, this one here. Inele koko, inele koko, inele koko. Before the race has started, the school is jubilating. And we are jumping and jumping and jumping. You see, we do it before. And once we do it and the, and the guy appears on some extra vim. When people are cheering you, there's some extra vim that allows you to outperform yourself. Before the choir comes up to minister, you put your hands together, you get excited, you shout. Before the man of God comes to minister, you put your hands together and you shout with expectancy. We don't do it because we are worshipping a human being. We do it because we are pulling an anointing. Who doesn't do well when there's priests? Who does well when there's silent? You are coming to run for your school and when you go, everybody's quiet. Nobody's hearing you. That's why God comes up in praise. Psalm, Psalm 149. We're now going to look at the expressions of praise. Psalm 149. Praise ye the Lord. Hush. Praise ye the Lord. The command has been given. Now the instructions of praise are going to follow. Number one, sing unto the Lord a new song. The first expression is sing. Sing unto the Lord what? A new song. Sing unto the Lord a new song all the year. Sing. You know, there are some of you who come to church, you don't sing. You haven't learned to sing. You are too diplomatic. Or you, you decide that I won't learn. You see, sing unto the Lord. And you, some of us only sing old songs. In fact, if we sing a song now that you don't know, it is likely that some people will not learn it. So every time there's a new song, you find out that some people, who says the song must be sweet to you? It's not to you, it's to God. 
I don't like the beat, so I won't learn it. No, God is saying, sing a new song. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. So there comes a time you don't sing old songs, you sing new songs. Today I'm going to sing a new song to God. Because the song is not familiar, I won't dance. You see, you see where? Because God says the instructions, sing a new song. So when we put up a new song, sing it. It's a new song, you don't know it, sing it. Say it to yourself, what's the newest song you know? So the choir comes and they are singing a new song. Oh, this song, there, it doesn't move me. You see, who says it's supposed to move you? Who are they singing to? You see how some of us, immediately you lose, you lose touch with anointing. And because of that, God's presence is there, but it's like you don't know it. So you are sitting there watching. No! Praise ye the Lord. How do you praise the Lord? Sing with a new song. And now, today's message. And then number two, and his praise and express it in the congregation of saints. Ah. It means that when we come together, nobody must sit down. You see, the place to express praise is when we gather as a church. You must never be idle. You must never watch. He says, sing it and do the praise in the congregation of his saints. So, pastor, I don't know how to dance. He says, express it in the congregation of the saints. So one of the things we see when the church gathers is that people begin to express praise and they are singing new songs. Verse 2. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of powerhouse be joyful in their king. Let powerhouse rejoice in him that made him. Let Choco be joyful in their king. Let us be glad we have a king who is a great king over all the earth. Let us be excited when we come into the presence of God that he's about to do something new in our lives. Let us come with new songs. Let us come expressing our praise. Let us rejoice in him that made us. Now listen carefully. The word rejoice is not based on your emotions. So, somebody who is not happy, somebody who doesn't have money in his pocket, somebody who may even have failed an exam, somebody who has received bad news, the Bible says rejoice. It has nothing to do with how you are feeling. Because there are too many of you whose praise is dependent on your emotions. So today is your birthday, so I'll dance. So you lie bad. You lie bad. You see, you'll be doing a lot in the flesh. And if you don't learn how to rejoice just by a command of the Lord, you will never learn praise that moves mountains. So there's no drums, no instruments. And then we come in there, everybody say rejoice. And then we just start jumping and dancing. And we are happying ourselves. And we are not doing it because we feel like oh, We are doing it unto the Lord. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let Israel rejoice in them that made him. Verse 3. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them do what? Praise his... You see, he's talking about singing. He's talking about rejoicing. Then he's talking about what? The dance. He didn't say a dance. He says the dance. It means there's a dance that God wants us to dance. And again, he didn't say that you are happy. He didn't say that you are... You have won the lottery or you have passed an exam. It says, let them praise him in the dance. Say, my praise is a weapon. First, it was fragrance. Then it turned to fire. My worship is my... This is how I win my battle. Uh This is how we win our battles. They've taken you to court. They are trying to seize everything. Leave them and go and look for a place to dance. Let them praise him in the dance. Let them praise him in the dance. Let them praise him in the dance. Hold it. Then the next thing is, let them sing praises unto him. With the team. You see where the instruments come in. You see, the first three or four things didn't come with instruments. So long before you come to church and you are waiting for instrumentalists to come and play, what do you do? Sing a new song. What do you do? Praise him in the dance. What do you do? Rejoice. And that is why instrumentalists must be very spiritual. Because you are not playing, just playing you. You see, you are obeying this thing to cause praises. Not just to play. Sing praises unto him with the timbrel and the harp. Jehovah, you are the most high. Jehovah, You see, then I start rejoicing. Before instruments, if you are not careful, they may even distract you. So learn to do it first before you come, you wait for them. Jehovah, hey! Verse 4. He says, he shall choose our inheritance for us. All of a sudden, God will decide that this one is what I want to give to you. 
I want to give this guy that house. I want to give this guy that mountain. I want to give that guy that business. I want to give this guy that contract. Maybe at the interview, they decided that we were going to give the, the contract to a party member. But all of a sudden, God shall choose our inheritance for us. Some way, somehow, they will bypass him and come and choose you. He shall choose our inheritance for us. He says, and he will beautify the meek with salvation. So you are in a place of danger. But all of a sudden, because you are meek and respectful to honor the Lord with your praise, he will beautify you with salvation. He delivers you from your sick bed. He delivers you from your enemies. He begins to beautify you. You can't explain why somebody who was born in a village, all of a sudden, God has picked him like David. You didn't go to school. You were a bush boy. You were a bush boy like me. All of a sudden, why you fair? Why you make a seer? Why? Because you learned praise as a weapon. You open prison doors and come out. You will break barriers and things that stand against you. Bondages and bands against you will be broken. Things that the witches and wizards have said you, they won't allow you. God will shake the foundations. Verse 5. Verse 5. It says, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud. Let them do what? You see, every time some of you are singing, you are singing to yourself. No. But there comes a time when it says, sing aloud. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. You see, it's not every song that you sing to yourself. There comes a time when the whole church is gathered and you are singing and the person next door can't hear you. There's something wrong. Have you ever seen a stadium where a goal has been scored? People are shouting because he didn't even score. He missed the goal. And everybody's saying, oh! But all of a sudden, it reverberates throughout the whole land. And you, God says, on your bed. You see, on your bed is where sometimes I drink, drink. You are thinking, what will I eat tomorrow? You are thinking, how will I go to school? You are thinking, how will I pay school fees? You are thinking, how will I get married? And God says, on your bed, when you are alone and you are thinking, don't just let those thoughts frame you. Sing aloud on your bed. I will joyfully sing I will sing praises unto my God and I will do a dance unto him. I will sing on my bed. I may be on my sick bed, but I will lift up a song. Maybe you've lost a job or your husband has left you or your wife has left you or some children is baby and you are wondering, hmm, when you lie down, hmm. Hey, God says stop them. Hmm. Rather lift up praise and let my presence come down. Let them sing joyfully and aloud. So when I stand by you and doing praises, I want to hear you. I want to hear you sing because you sing aloud. So the choir doesn't need a mic. When you stand here without a mic and you are 20, 30 in this church, how come we can't hear you? I will joy, 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 joy overflow. You see, when you are singing, the expressions, the singing, the movement of the body, you feel it that this is somebody who praises God. And you can have somebody in the choir also who sing. I will joy, 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 joy. You see, and that kind of thing it doesn't bring them. You see, when you come and stand here, you're, you're, you're standing here is not just to show your, your things. So. You're standing here is to bring the presence of God down. So when you stand here and you lift up a song, don't get into the flesh. Do it with understanding that something must come down for yokes to be broken and for doors to be open. You see, that's, that's so flimsy. No, 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 no. You see, there must be something that identifies you more than that. Is that there's the presence of God comes down when you minister. When you minister. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Verse 6. Ah. Ah. Then he now shifts gear. One chucky gear. Then he says, let the high praises of God so from verse 1 to verse 5 it was praises but now it says right now you, 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 can't, you, can't, you can't stop again you see it go your inside so now it says it's called high praises it's no longer just praise and it says let the high praises of God be in your mouth 
Jehovah, Jehovah, eh, and you are just dancing and you don't want to stop. And the drama is playing. Now, Jehovah, that's the only thing you can say. Let God arise, 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 arise. Take your place, be enthroned on our praise. Arise. It's not a warfare. King of kings, holy God, as we sing, arise, arise, arise. Arise, 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 arise. Now you've moved away from normal rhythm. You've entered into something where God himself places a language within you. You will sing arise uh, because it's no longer just human effort. The Holy Spirit is leading you into that song. That's why they could take only one song. Jehoshaphat, praise the Lord for his mercy and endure forever. And sing that song throughout. Because it was no longer just praise, it was high praises. And the Bible says that let the high praises of God be in your mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. The verse 7 is exciting. It says, what is that high praise going to do? It is going to execute vengeance. You see? Praises, warfare. Praises, God says, once you begin to give it to me, I will execute vengeance upon the heathen, them that gather against you, the Ammonites, the all the enemies that have gathered against you. He says, I will, because of your high praises, don't worry, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All of a sudden, I'll execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. I will punish them. I will catch them in their sins and punish them. They won't go free. See, warfare has begun. Why should I come to church and sweat? You don't sweat in church. You go and sweat somewhere else. Why should I come to church and, and dance like a small boy? Who told you that you're a small boy? Who, who, which liar told you that? That's not God's voice. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. And a two-edged sword. Hey! To execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. Verse 8. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Off you, mommy. God says, I will tie them and make them useless. And then look at what he says, verse 9. To execute upon them the judgment that is written. So listen, sometimes you can have judgment that is not enforced. But God says, because we are praising now, every judgment that is against them, I will make sure it's enforced. Sometimes we can pass a judgment and say, oh, but we've we let, we left him. But God says, once you've passed the judgment that is not good, I will enforce it. All of a sudden, your enemy is sitting somewhere. He thinks he's free. And what are we doing? We are in church. Who told you that coming to church is a waste of time? Who told you that you don't have anything to do when you come and dance in church? Who told you that is a waste of time? It's warfare. And the Bible says that this honor, this honor have all his saints. So every child of God can employ this honor. It is your honor to praise God and to bring judgment upon your enemies. You have the unique responsibility and the privilege of also doing it. It's not just for a pastor. It's not just for the choir. It's not just for the people who speak in tongues. It's for every Christian and every child of God. And then he says, praise ye the Lord. So Psalm 149 verse 1. Started with praise the Lord. Psalm 149 verse 9, the last sentence ended with praise the Lord. If the living will not praise the Lord, who will praise the Lord? If church members will not praise the Lord, who will praise the Lord? You are as strong as your praise. Listen, you are as strong as your praise. It's a weapon. It must be used with skill and deliberately. It must be taken on the battleground. It must be at the forefront of the battle so that God... The warfare dimension of praise. Once you are praising, you are releasing judgment. Under a prophetic direction, dance and celebrate God in all your troubles. Come and see yo. Hey. Come and see yo. Hey. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord has done. Come and see what the Lord Come and see, come and see yo Come and see yo Come and see what the Lord has done Come and see what the Lord has done Come and see what the Lord has done Come and see what the Come and see yo, come and see yo Come and see yo Come and see what the Lord has done. 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 There's a mystery in sports.
two wrestlers are in the ring, but there are 20,000 people in the stadium watching the wrestlers. The people who are watching, they don't get money. There are 22 players on the park. There are millions of people all over the world watching. The people who are watching, they don't get money. It's the people who are playing. You cannot be a, a spectator in church. Be part of the players. Don't just come and come and watch the choir. You to sing. Don't just come and come and clap for somebody else. You to clap for yourself. Because if you just come and watch, you will rather pay for other people to enjoy. Because it is only the people who participate who get direct benefits. You don't want to dance. You dance. <laughs> you don't want to sing. You will sing a new song. You don't want to clap. You will clap and shout. Why? Because you are no, you are no longer just watching. You are participating. And everywhere there's praise, it's a weapon. You see, I read about Hannah and I found out that before Hannah got pregnant, she had praised. Before Hannah got pregnant, there was praise. You cannot be diplomatic about the gospel and about your faith. One thing praise does is that it destroys fear by clothing you with the presence of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's going to take you there. Praise to take you into the secret places. Don't just sit behind the computer. Don't just play an instrument. When you are playing, you to get up and dance. Don't just be an usher that just comes in and you put your hands around. You are just folding and looking at everybody. Don't just be an usher that did and just be folding. Around. Dance during praises and worship time. Get involved in the service. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Let's all read it together. Who is like thee unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness? No, 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 no. You didn't hear that part again. Say it. Doing what? So, so what is it? Fearful. When it comes to praises, what is God? How do you say it's fearful? God is fearful in praises. That's when he does wonders. When the people begin to praise God, he will touch you direct. God is fearful in praises. 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 God is fearful. It means that when God comes, he's a terror. He's a terrible God. The sea will flee. In fact, they don't even stand to resist. They will run. It's fearful. He praises. So if you want to see a terrible God, praise him. If you want to go and walk as victorious, praise God. Don't be bothered about who is against you. Employ the mystery of praise. The mystery of praise. The mystery of praise. The mystery of praise. All saints have this great privilege. The mystery of praise. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Dance to please God. Dance before the Lord. A little girl, Her Herod's daughter, danced before Herod so much that Herod, a human being, said, because of your dance, I'll give you half of the kingdom. Look at a human being who is so impressed with the dance that he can say, I'll give you half the kingdom. Ah! Then my God, I can now understand why David danced with all his might. Because he was provoking something. I serve a living God, oh. I serve a living God, oh. Now you de reno, your love has taken over me. Father, I depend on you. I have confidence in you. In you, O oh Lord, I put my trust. Hello, precious one. We wish to extend a warm invitation to you to join us for any of our Sunday services at the PMI King's Temple. Our services are specially designed to specifically meet your needs and draw you closer to have fellowship with God in His presence. You are welcome to join us in person at 6.15 a.m. for the morning glory service, at 7.30 a.m. for the second service, which is also streamed live across all our social media platforms, and at 9.45 a.m. for the third service, we also wish to invite you to join us for the Living Manor, our weekday Bible teaching service, which comes off every Tuesday at 6 p.m. and Thursday at 6.30 p.m. in person and online, respectively. On Fridays, we gather before our Father's altar at 6 p.m. to pray and seek His face for divine encounters. The King has a special place for you. Don't come alone. You surely will be blessed by the Word of God in Jesus' name. God richly bless you.
Thank you for listening to Rhema Power with Reverend Nee Bernard Adiapa. We hope you've been blessed. For further information, contact 0303-931-841. Tune in next week for another insightful teaching on Rhema Power. Shine up.